Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video that I didn't really want to do, but I kind of want to do, but I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not. And I haven't filmed a video in a while. I know. I <laughs> Okay, you know I go missing and come back and I go missing and come back, but I told y'all, I warned y'all, I don't want to do YouTube unless I want to. I don't want to feel like I'm forced. When I feel an inkling to make a video, I'm gonna make one. So today I felt like filming the assumptions video. I don't know if it's a tag or what, but this is like a video where people tell you their assumptions. You just deny it or confirm it. That's what I'm gonna do. I feel like majority of the people who responded already know me well enough to know about me, but this is mainly for people who don't know me very well or if you had some assumptions about me and you just wanted to get it off your chest. I feel like this is a setup. The the Alice in Wonderland curious and curiouser in me is really, really intrigued to know what your assumptions are. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this tag and we'll see how it goes, okay? The first one is my sister Lexis and she says, I assume that you love me. Yes, Lexis. I love you. The next one says, I assume you're tall. A lot of people assume that I'm tall. Like a lot of people assume that I'm like 5'11 or something. I'm definitely only 5'3 guys. I'm a little teeny bitty girl. Um, I'm very small frame. Now the thing is I look tall because I'm long. Like I'm a long human being. Like my legs are long, my arms are long, my torso is like ginormous. I don't know why I have such a friggin' long torso. It's ridiculous. Like I have to wear tall one piece swimsuits. I have long feet. I have big feet. So I'm not really sure why I have a long body and I'm short. I assume that you're an impulse shopper like me. I'm I'm like half and half impulse and calculated. Especially bigger purchases. Like I actually don't buy a lot of super expensive stuff. Like I don't be buying designer purses and designer shoes all the time. Like I promise y'all, I will rent a handbag in a second. I'll see something that I like and I won't buy it right away. Um, I'll try to find a cheaper alternative or find it on sale or a discount somewhere. And if I can't find it on sale or a discount and I'm still thinking about it, then I'll go ahead and buy it. But Instagram gets me in trouble a lot because I definitely find myself buying stuff on Instagram. My ads are so perfectly tailored to me and my shopping taste that I'm a little scared. I assume you hold yourself back from your full potential. Um, yes, and I've talked about that before. So I don't think that's an assumption. I think you heard me say that. Mainly because my full potential gives me a little bit of anxiety. Like it kind of scares me a bit. This year I told myself I was gonna get better about going, going for it. Just like going for the things that I want. Growing up, I was the kid that wouldn't ask their parents parents if I could go somewhere and do something because I just knew they were gonna say no even though they might have said yes but I didn't ask just because I already knew in my brain that they were gonna say no I do that to myself now like I tell myself no nah, I'm not gonna do that because I already know how you are Vicky you're not gonna you're gonna start that and you're not gonna finish it so I just don't even go for it um <laughs> so I, I I tell myself no even though I could take myself to, to that level so yeah I, I often run at the side of hard work. Even though I know I can do it, I just don't feel like it. I assume you might get nervous if fans spot you, fans, fans spot you in public and want to want to hug and get to know you. Um, actually, it's the opposite. When people see me in public, they are the ones who are nervous and don't want to talk. And I'm the one who'll go up to them and be like, hey, do you know me? Or like, I'll walk right past them on purpose just to see if they'll say something. And they'll be like, is it you? And I'm like, nope. It's not me. I want them to say something. Like, I don't like when people see me and don't say anything. Don't send me no DM and say, hey, you saw me, but you didn't come say hi, because I'm going to be mad at you. This one says, I assume that if YouTube ended tomorrow, you would be fine, maybe even relieved. Y'all remember that one time where YouTube was tripping and I was like, I don't know why everybody's tripping that YouTube is down. I'm low-key kind of excited. <laughs> A, a small part of me still loves YouTube. I still love the original idea of having a YouTube channel and posting content and I miss I miss having that rush and that excitement to film. I just don't anymore and it's mainly because the crowd is different. I feel like my followers have kind of grown up, I've kind of grown up and I just don't get the same gratification that I do from filming a video um, that I used to, especially not about beauty. Um, the beauty community is just in, a, in shambles at all together. It's not my main source of fulfillment. Like I, I really don't get excited about filming anymore. And if I do feel like filming something, filming something, I do film it. I'm kind of one foot in and one foot out. Like I'm not really like abandoning YouTube. Um, I just am not excited about it anymore. And you guys can tell, and I'm not really ashamed to say that either. I feel like it's perfectly fine to, you know, 
grow out of something and move on but it's not my main source of income uh i'm not tripping off of that even though youtube for me was never about the money it was always about doing what i loved and expressing myself and i feel like i've been able to do that more effectively on instagram lately so if youtube were to die tomorrow i wouldn't be sad um because i've already mourned the death of youtube i assume that you don't cook or clean much well um you know you could be correct i mean it's not like there's a whole, a whole bunch of people living in my house it's just me and cam so there's not much to cook and clean for okay i like to go out to eat now that we're back to working out again i'll probably start cooking more again but um most of the time we're going out to eat or i'm getting food delivered to my house i assume that you wouldn't be a people person or anti-social people think that i'm so social and like i'm like such an extrovert um but i'm actually an ambivert so i'm both i'm introvert and extrovert i can get along with pretty much anyone i don't really have problems with people like that but i also don't have to be around people to be cool like i i like to spend most of my day alone but usually when we're around nighttime i'm ready to go out and do something for like a certain amount of time and then i'm ready to come back home so i i like both i like to be social and not social at the same time. If I don't have to talk to you, I won't talk to you. If a conversation strikes up, I'll strike a conversation. I'm just not a talky, like I'm not like a small talk, start a conversation with random people kind of person. You know what I mean? Like I pretty much keep to myself um, unless I'm solicited. I assume that you easily make friends. As an adult, I feel like making friends is not really like a thing thing. We're all in our own little world as an adult, but um, definitely growing up, I was, I very easily made friends. I, I never had like close, close friends, but I had a lot of like acquaintances. So I've always been able to be cordial with all types of people, be friends with all types of people. I feel like I can easily make friends, but making close friends, I'm very picky about. And I will distance myself from you in a in a hot second. We can still be friends, but we distance. Okay, because I don't play no mess, all right? <laughs> she said, I assume that you are a lady in the streets, but a freak in the bed. <laughs> Girl, you funny, but that's true though. I assume that you are bougie, but I know you ratchet deep down in your soul. Listen. You just described me to a T, okay? I wouldn't say that I'm completely ratchet, but there are ratchet streaks in me. I think it, a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm a Southern girl. And so, you know, I got a little bit of country in me, okay? I'm, I'm definitely got some country in there. I can be proper and talk in my proper voice, but if I need to be ratchet, let the right beat come on. I assume that you don't have much insecurities and are confident. I have insecurities, but I don't let them get the best of me. Um, I just acknowledge them for what they are and move on with my life. And I don't like just go around throwing them at people. You know what I'm saying? Like some, you know some people wear their insecurities on their face and on their sleeve. I don't have that. The things that I'm insecure about or the things that I feel like I'm not confident about, I don't really like show that. How are you going to overcome it if you stay talking about it all day? I assume that you're a little stuck up. I actually saw a lot of these that say stuck up. Um, and I'm not offended by that at all. I'm not offended by people saying that I'm stuck up because I, it's been said to me so many times over my lifetime. And I think people often get that impression because number one, I'm a starer and I will stare at you. Like I'm, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm like mean mugging or nothing. Cause I don't mean mug. I just literally like fixate on people's faces. I, I like faces. I like to look at people and analyze how they move, how their eyebrows move, micro expressions. I don't know, I'm just a starer. So when people are talking to me, I stare at them and I don't say anything. Most of the time, especially at church, after church, when everybody's standing around talking and I'm just standing in the corner on my phone, I'm in my own little space. Like I'm thinking, I'm overthinking in my head about something and I don't really feel the need to go up to people and talk to people. But now I understand that people think that that's suck up and that means I need to go talk. So I try to be more social. <laughs> um, when I'm around people, but most of the time I'm in my own little world and thinking about random, like having conversations in my head, thinking about random stuff. It has nothing to do with anybody. I just be in my head all the time. And I think another people, reason why people think that I'm stuck up is because I am not a sugar coater and I don't try to make people feel like comfortable, I guess. And I'm unapologetically myself. I don't know. I don't like walking on eggshells and you know, I'm not a huggy, hold your hand kind of person. Like I'm not gonna sit up here and call myself stuck up, but I could see why people would say that because I'm just not a comforting person, if that makes sense. 
Uh, I assume that you're spoiled. Um, if you're talking about when I was a kid or growing up, you could say that I was spoiled. But now I'm not spoiled. Now I am uh, an adult and I spoil myself, okay? My husband spoils me and I spoil myself. Um, but my parents, they, as soon as I left the house, my dad was like, the windows are closed, okay? Bye. I'm done spending money on you, okay, sis? But somebody else said that I assume that you grew up wealthy or that you grew up in a wealthy home. I actually didn't. Um, my parents were very broke when they had me. My parents were really young when they had me, but we lived in a one bedroom apartment for a while. A lot of my home videos that I show on um, my vlog channel, you'll see I'm in a house, but that house was actually not even our house. That was my grandparents' house. And after my grandfather died, we moved in with my grandmother. I shopped at thrift stores and consignment stores and secondhand stores like a good majority of my life. Like up until high school, I think I was shopping at half off half and thrift stores. So, you know, I didn't even notice that we didn't have money. You know, our cable would get cut off and I'd be like, mom, what happened to Gullah Gullah Island? And she'd be like, oh, it's not on no more. Just watch PBS Kids. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know we had the, that was the best time of my life when we were broke. So, I mean, hey, we were not poor in spirit. Somebody said, I assume that you want a baby and you want to be a mom, but it has been a struggle. That is an assumption that is correct. And I think you guys have probably seen me talk about it or heard me talk about it before. Um, but we're waiting on God for this one. Um, some stuff in life you just can't control and it really isn't up to you. You know, it's like no matter what I do, I can't force this or make it happen on my own. So... Um, yeah, it'll just happen when it happens. Every now and then I do go through these little moments that I have where I'm just like really down on myself about it. You know, it's it's been, I think the most hard thing about this whole journey, and I can't believe I'm talking about this right now because usually I would not be able to say this. I think the, uh, I think the craziest thing about this whole journey is that although it's been a struggle for me and Cam, I think we've gotten so much stronger as a couple because of it. I mean, we, we laugh and joke and have so much fun way more than we ever have in our five years of being married like i think we we are like just connecting because of this people don't see it people see how happy we are on pic in pictures and on the vlogs and stuff how much fun we have together but we go through a lot as a couple and we have a lot of pressure on us especially you know being in the public eye on youtube and um in real life at church and stuff and so you know people expect a lot from us and they expect us to to have some kids um and so that pressure gets really heavy sometimes but i think what really gets us through it is just having each other and um i wouldn't wish this on anyone but i also am aware of why i'm going through it i think i need this to learn how to trust god and how to lean on my husband i think we both needed this so you know, I'm hopeful for the future. To be quite honest, I'm not good with kids anyway. So I can take all the time I need. I like to wake up whenever I feel like it and leave the house whenever I want, you know? So, I mean, when it happens, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, but I'm just not gonna rush it. Uh, I assume that you overthink everything. That is facts. I assume you and Raven are only YouTube friends. Um, no. I think me and Raven have a very interesting relationship in that we don't really need to talk all the time to be cool. Uh, when we link up, we link up and we we cool, we family, you know, but um, I think because people don't really see us like hang out all the time, we're, a, we're in a long distance friendship anyway. So it, yeah, it's not gonna look like a regular friendship because we don't live in the same state. I assume that Taylor is your only real friend. That is not... That's not true. I assume you have a really hard time keeping friends. Actually, no. Um, I think the definition of friend for me has kind of changed over the years. I think people assume that a friend is somebody that you hang out with all the time. For me, friendship is just somebody that I can count on when I need them. And I don't really need people for a lot. So I'm, I'm very low maintenance. Like you don't have to hit me up at all for a couple months and I'm good. Like I am the most low maintenance you can get when it comes to friendships. I assume that you're very down to earth, that you're down to earth and you're very careful about who you let in your life. That is very true. I'm very particular about the people that I keep in my circle, that I keep around me, um, because you gotta be very uplifting and encouraging. I don't like people who are draining and I don't like people who nag 
or put pressure on me to do anything. I like people who give me my space but are still in my space, if that makes sense. But I am very down to earth too, yeah, for sure. Like I, I think I'm really down to earth. Like I'm really honest and raw. I don't sugarcoat stuff. I'm just like, I think I'm a normal person just like everybody else. I don't think I'm famous. I think I'm hyper visible if anything, but I'm not famous. You know, I'm just, I'm a normal, regular, regular, regular girl. I assume that you've had conflict with your personal style slash career and being a preacher's wife. Um, no. And I think, I think people get the impression that like what I do is conflicting with me being a pastor's wife. It actually isn't. Like the people, people who go to my church watch my videos all the time. Actually Cam's dad, he watches my videos sometimes. He be on my Twitter liking my posts sometimes. I'm like, it's like, what you doing on my Twitter? And actually a lot of people ask me for help and advice all the time because they watch my videos at church. They'd be like, girl, I was watching your video and I saw you do this, I saw you use this. The girls at my church, they do come up to me and they tell me they watch my videos. Their parents tell me that they that they watch my videos and they're very encouraged by them. So, and that's why I haven't deleted my channel or stopped doing it because I know that younger girls do still watch me. Um, and I just try to be as much of a help as possible. I, you know, I don't, I don't think I do anything that um, makes me or my church look bad and that's why I try not to and I'm very particular uh, about what I post and about what I what I share online just because I know I'm not about to sit up here and try to make myself look like anything that I'm not because people in real life watch me so I assume that you're a type of person that isn't easily approachable apparently I'm not people have told me a lot of times that I'm unapproachable um I'm working on it though I think actually in in the most recent days my most recent years I've been told that I am getting better so I try to smile and look bright eyed and bushy tailed because I'm aware <laughs> that my face is strong. So I have a strong resting stank face and I don't know, I don't know why, I just do. I assume that you are over having social media as a job but you still like to interact sometimes. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'm over social media. I, I actually really enjoy Instagram right now. Um, I enjoy, you know, going to events and taking pictures and I enjoy more lifestyle stuff. Um, I think if anything, I'm over the beauty part of it. Beauty is not really like my like my, my main focus anymore. I like more lifestyle type stuff, like I said, working with more lifestyle brands, doing more stuff that's true to my everyday life. I'm evolving with who I am as a person, but it's also not the end all be all of me and it's not the end of the world if I don't get on social media for a day. And if I don't post that day, I'm not tripping. Um, so I don't make it like, my everything like it's not my main whole priority of in life you know what i'm saying and i don't think any career will ever be my main priority in life my family comes first you know supporting my husband and what he does um reaching people and helping people in that aspect is my main priority to me this is just a blessing that god has given me as an outlet to express myself and to make money doing that but at the end of the day this is not my purpose Social media is not my purpose. I believe reaching people and helping them is my purpose, but social media is just one of the ways that I'm able to do that. So there's a lot of people in here saying that they assume that I hate Chicago. They assume that I don't want to live here. They assume that um, if I could leave, I would. If I could move somewhere else, I would. That I miss Texas. Um, and I don't know why people get the impression that I hate it here. Just because I like Texas more doesn't mean that I hate it here and I want to leave. I mean, yeah, I talk bad about Chicago only because of the weather and the weather does suck. The, the weather really can change your mood and your whole aura. But I definitely don't think that I should move or that I should leave just because I don't really, that I, that I like Texas more. I do plan on staying here, y'all, I'm not leaving. And to be quite honest, I've actually grown to really, really enjoy Chicago, especially in the summertime, I love it here. Me personally, I enjoy Chicago way more than New York and LA. Um, not to talk bad about y'all city if you're from New York or LA, but I like Chicago a lot more. Does the cost of living suck? Yes, okay. Uh, does the weather suck? Y'all, half the year. But I mean, hey, it is what it is. I assume that you're really goofy and rarely get angry. That is facts. That is definitely facts. I'm a goofy goober for sure. And like I just laugh and giggle at everything. But I do get angry. It actually manifests more in like to anxiety. So I, I don't like to be angry. I don't like for people to make me angry. Yeah, it's usually just like family and close, close friends that could really make me angry and they typically don't. So yeah, I don't get angry very easily. I assume because you don't upload often, you don't treat YouTube as a real job. I don't, YouTube is not really my job though. Like I don't 
classify myself as a YouTuber. I c categorize myself as a content creator and an influencer, but I don't. I wouldn't say that YouTube is my job. Do I make money from it? Yes, but I consider YouTube a hustle that is a part of my overarching, overall job, if that makes sense. So YouTube is a part of the combination of social media outlets that I use to make money, um, but it's not my main source of income, like I said, and it's also not the one that makes me the most money either. It's not my main job. I assume you don't wanna waste time on friendships that aren't beneficial. Who would wanna waste time on a friendship that's not beneficial? I think anybody would wanna be in a healthy relationship that benefits them at some point. Not that I get into relationships specifically for the benefits, because I don't think that people really benefit you as much as you think they do, unless you're getting into relationships just for the clout. Um, but I definitely am not a clout chaser, especially in friendships. I actually like to be around people who don't have any clout at all. But you know, I'm I'm cool with people just to be cool with people. Like I don't, I don't really go out looking for beneficial relationships. I think people benefit you the more that you spend time with them. So yeah. I assume that you're gonna drop a clothing line or collab soon. Um, <laughs> this is what's so funny to me. People really think that just because I like clothes that that means I'm gonna start a clothing line. No, I'm not. Like, I have no desire to start a clothing line, actually. I really genuinely enjoy buying things. Um, if anything, in the future, I probably would come out with, like, like some merch. There were, there was a point in my life where I did want to be a fashion designer. I think as I grew older, I realized that the actual work that goes into being a boutique owner or fashion designer is a lot and it's not what I want to do like I think if you guys knew the behind the scenes of certain things you would you would change your mind about whether or not it's something that's desirable um and seeing the behind the scenes work of having a like retail business I don't have the mental capacity to do that like I do not I do not. I know me and I know that owning my own clothing line would probably be stressful and something that I wouldn't I wouldn't like. I wouldn't like clothes anymore if I did it. If anything, I, I would I wouldn't mind doing a collab with like a clothing company or something, but I, I don't want to do all the work. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll be there, but right now, definitely not. I assume that you've never gone through a romantic relationship heartbreak. If not, I'm jealous. I don't know. Do do like the little middle school relationships count? But that's the only time I've ever really had like a romantic relationship issue where it was like a heartbreak per se. I've only had a couple relationships before Cam and they weren't really even serious because we never like dated for real. Um, it was mostly just us talking on the phone and sneaking around. And so I didn't really have the opportunity to get my heart broken. But I will say that that one moment in middle school was kind of traumatic. It was a Lizzie McGuire moment, if anything. Growing up, I was so unbreakable. Like I was, the type of girl I, you could i didn't take no mess from nobody even dudes like i i would curb dudes all the time they used to try to talk to me and i'd be like no go away i don't like you i think friendship breakups are probably the worst they're the worst they're, they're the hardest to get over and if anything yes i have had my heart broken in a friendship but not with a guy i assume that you love sneakers more than heels you're not gonna do that to me what you're not gonna do what you're not gonna do is make me give up my heels for my sneakers. Actually, I'm not even a heel person. I'm a boot person. If anything, I love boots the most. Boots are my favorite. So I said, I assume that you're scared of babies. <laughs> you know. So I said, I assume that your discernment concerning situations are very accurate. I have very good discernment. I, I do pride myself on having very good discernment, especially with people. I assume you will disappear off social media and pop up randomly some years later. You've been reading my diary. I assume you're introverted at first, and once you get to know people, you open up. Yes! Like I said, I'm an ambivert, so I'm introverted until you get to know me, and then I am going to talk your head off. I assume you are still finding yourself. Um, when do you stop finding yourself? Women change maybe like five or six times over the course of their life, um, if not more than that. So I think every year I'm learning something new about myself, and I think every, every year you should find something new about yourself and learn something new. And evolve. I assume that you lately you've been in a really good and positive headspace. I try to be sis. Every day is different, um, but for the most part, I am I'm holding on to this resilience this year. So even though there have been some really tough days this year already, I bounce back them back from them very quickly. I pray about it. I move on. I assume you feel like you live in a box because of expectations. This person also says, I assume that you love your life, but you also want to live your life without judgment. Live emphasis on live. 
Um, I do feel about, I do feel like I live in a box sometimes. I feel like, actually, not really a box, but I feel like more so I live like in a cage at the zoo and people just walk by and watch me and want me to do something cool and then like tap in on the cage, like trying to make me do stuff. It's like people are just waiting for me to do something. Like they're just like, so what you gonna do next? And I'm just like, live my life? I don't know. And to live my life without judgment would be an awesome life. Raise your hand if you live your life without judgment. If nobody judges you, raise your hand. I assume that you never got in trouble as a kid slash teen. Whew, girl, the whoopings that I got were real whoopings. And I got my phone taken away months at a time. And I got my car taken away senior year because I was doing stupid stuff. Actually, majority of high school, I was in trouble. And then I still feel like even now when my dad calls me sometimes, I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble. I don't know why, I just feel like, oh crap, what did I do this time? I assume that you look down on those who have kids but aren't married. Uh, I don't know why you feel like that. Pro well, I actually do know why you feel like that. I think people assume that Christians in particular are very judgmental of other people. And so you guys assume that when somebody does something that is not Christian-like, we don't approve of it and therefore we look down on people. Especially with my friends, some of my friends, they're like, well, their lifestyle is different than yours, so why are you friends with them? Or how can you be friends with them? Or how come you don't preach to them and tell them how to live their life? And I'm like, I'm not gonna tell people how to live their life. Like I'm not, especially if you grown. I don't babysit grown folks. So if you are living your life and it's not something that I would do, I'm gonna let you do it. If you ask for my advice and you ask me what I think, I'm gonna give you my two cents. But if you don't, that's your life. I'm not gonna force you to do anything. I'd rather live by example. And if you don't follow my example or you don't find my example appealing, that's fine with me. What I will say is I don't look down on people for having kids outside of marriage, but if it's an unfavorable situation and you know they have baby daddy drama and stuff like that, that kind of stuff, does upset me. It doesn't make me mad at them. It just makes me mad at the situation because I know that I had a lot of friends growing up that only had one parent and I saw how it affected them so heavily. A lot of them have really, really deep rooted issues because of daddy issues or mommy issues or not having parents at all issues. I know how heavy those issues can be. And not to say that I look down on anybody because of it, but it does make me feel like, oh man, I really wish that they were in a situation where they were together and they were married and they were gonna stay together. I know that's not the case for everybody and that doesn't always happen. I pray for them. I pray for their well-being. I pray for their relationships. I pray that they do find somebody that can be a good father or mother to their children. The only time that I ever look down on somebody or I'm upset with someone because they had a kid outside of marriage is if they did so in a way that was hurtful. And by that, I mean like infidelity and all that type of stuff. That kind of stuff is what makes me mad and I don't tolerate that at all. I don't I don't like to see my friends get hurt. And if they get hurt by somebody, we don't fight, we don't box. But if they just, you know, they had a baby with somebody and you know, that's the situation at hand, then that's the situation at hand. I can't force anybody to live a life that I want them to live. And I'm not about to write people off or cut people off for living a life that I don't want them to live. You know, I, I try to be understanding um, because I know that everybody needs somebody and I'm not about to just leave people hanging just because I don't agree with their lifestyle or something like that. that no, I'm not about to say that I'm better than anybody else because I didn't have kids before I got married. I can't even, I haven't, I haven't even been able to have kids yet. So who's to say? Y'all And y'all know I have friends who have kids outside of marriage. Y'all know this. Okay. So that's obviously not something that I look down on because I'm friends with them. I assumed that you were mean and stuck up, but getting to know you, you're really sweet. Aw, thanks. I assume that you like to be very blunt and honest instead of sugarcoat. Yeah, I grew up in a very blunt and honest home. My parents would tell me the truth, uh, even if it was like mean. Vicky's annoying. Yeah, she complains too much. My dad has told me everything about me and he still loves me, so. I assume that you are still very nervous about the, respons the amount of responsibility God has in store for you. Yes. That casting your cares thing, still trying to figure out how to do it because the cares still be here. But listen, sis, we gonna get it out, okay? We gonna, we gonna make this work, all right? I assume that you're very loving and give a lot to people around you. I do, I do, I'm a giver. I assume that you spend a lot on clothes that you hardly end up wearing. I do, I do, I'm a spender. But the good thing is I can sell stuff on Poshmark, number one, and I end up giving some away to people in need. So there you go. I assume that you don't like your natural because like all of us curly girls, we grew up around straight hair and envy envied that so you never really learn. This is a common assumption about people who have natural hair but they wear it straight or wear wigs or whatever. Growing up, I never was really, I never really learned how to do my hair 
um, curly just because back in the day curly hair wasn't really in style so when my mom stopped doing my hair around like when I was 12 or 13 and she started letting me do my own hair it was hard for me to manage it on my own so she started taking me to get it professionally straightened and she never wanted me to get a perm and I never wanted a perm either I've never wanted a perm I've never wanted permanently straight hair at all so people were wearing curly styles to transition from what I remember wearing my hair curly was not really a huge deal to me because I wasn't going natural because I was already natural does that make sense I straighten my hair strictly out of convenience I don't I don't straighten it because I don't like my curly hair obviously I'm not a, I'm not opposed to wearing my hair curly it's just if it's not easy for me to do every day I'm not going to do it. This is easy. I've been able to manage this. So it has nothing to do with the fact that I envy people with straight hair. When I cut my hair off and my hair was in that pixie cut, I wore it curly for majority of the year. And I loved it like that. And I feel like that was my favorite hairstyle um, because it was so easy. So I didn't mind being natural then. It's just the longer my hair gets, the less I want to wear it natural because it's work, sis. You can do that if you want to. Not my calling. I do not like doing hair, okay? So... That's why. I assume Auntie Vicky can twerk. Will you ever see it? Probably not. I don't want my husband to be mad at me and I don't want my grandma calling me on the phone. I try to tell y'all some stuff I just can't do because I want my grandma to call me, okay? But I can definitely throw it in a circle. I assume that, you, that your heart is not in Chicago and you prefer you can live somewhere else. What I will say is, people, like I said, people think that I want to move. Um, my heart is always going to be in Texas because I'm a Texas girl and we are bred to love Texas. I don't want to move. I think we should stay here. It is what it is. God has me here for a reason. So I assume that sometimes you wish you weren't a PK or a pastor's wife. So the radar on you wasn't as heavy. I think that's what they're trying to say. Yeah, it does get to me sometimes. And it's just because of the pressure, man. It's a lot of pressure. I don't think people understand. You know, I love Jesus, but the pressure though, it's a lot. And sometimes I do wish I was a normal freaking person. Can I just be normal for like two seconds? I assume that you can be pretty rude when you want to be. Oh no, I'm not rude. I'm not rude to people. Definitely not. I'm not a rude person. If anything, I'm rude to the people I love and care about. And I feel like that's just how we show each other affection. I assume you're afraid of commitment in a lot of ways. Small commitments, yes. Big commitments, not so much. I feel like I'm married and that's the biggest commitment you can make. I assume that all of your close friends are married. Not all, but a lot of them are. I assume your life is perfect. Definitely not. I assume you have a stank face, but after watching your chit chat videos, you're so down to earth. I do have a stank face. Okay, I'm done. I gotta go cook dinner, but this was cute. Uh, <laughs> I was really scared to do this because I was scared that people were gonna like come for my whole life. But actually, I didn't mind you guys for you to be for filth because you guys were accurate on like a lot of the stuff. That's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys in my next one and see you soon. Okay.